Hey there, good afternoon everybody. Welcome here to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. I am here at the library today. I thought I would try one here. They have a nice kind of a patio up back from the library at this place. So I thought, you know what, there's nobody here today. Nobody's bothering me. So I'm just going to come out here and make the video today. So this is my series that we've been doing for the month of September. This is episode number seven on day seven, featuring two bands that uh, I, I liked quite a bit. So for those of you who have been following the series, or you know what's coming up next, but for those of you who haven't been, basically I, my friend Ben has given me 32 progressive rock bands that are a little bit more obscure, not as well known as some of the bigger bands. I listen to two bands and then I decide on which one I think I like better and should go on to the next battle. So today we have uh, two uh, really interesting bands, both I've known of and have heard stuff from from before. One of them is North Star, sorry the wind is giving me hell here. <laughs> uh, one of them is North Star, which is a kind of a neo-prog band from the 80s, part of that neo-prog band movement that came with Marillion and all those other bands. Um, the album is Feel the Cold, and I'm starting to feel it here. <laughs> so this album came out in 1985, a really good, solid, progressive rock album from that era, very similar in style to um, IQ, uh, I hear a little bit of uh, Marillion in here as well. They definitely have that genre part very well executed. Um, some excellent keyboards on this particular track. Uh, I'm just going to try to look at my notes if the wind will cooperate. Just put it over here. Um, and if for those of you who haven't seen this album, I don't actually own it, but I've seen it. It's um, it's the cover is three guys sitting around a campfire inside of a cave with a, a bit of a hieroglyphic on the um, on the uh, wall behind it. And I don't know if hieroglyphic is the correct term here. This could be just some kind of a symbol as well. Um, the vocals are pretty mid-range, and, and but overall they're fairly forward. Nice set of vocals, not not irritating in any way. I don't find them at all like that. The music, um, lots of synthesizers, lots of bass, lots of, um, I can't even read that last word on my line there. Hmm, I don't even know what that says, so we'll skip it. Uh, it's a pretty dominant, dominated by keyboards and synthesizers, as most of the bands from that era are. They tend to, um, a lot of them tend to be influenced by bands like Genesis and yes, mostly by Genesis, very Genesis sounding. This album is definitely falls within that. Uh, the guy's vocals are well within the Phil Collins range. Uh, I really thought that this was a really very, very, uh, lots of very similar sounds to And Then There Were Three. There's one particular track which I made a note of. Um, which sounds quite a bit like uh, Deep in the Mother Load. I believe that's the, ti the title of the track from the Genesis album. I do have the album, but I can't remember if it's just Mother, Mother Load or Deep in the Mother Load. I think it's Deep in the Mother Load. Very much sounds very much like that. Um, the drums are pretty dominant on this album, as, as is the bass, uh, at different points. Not, not, not overplayed, you know. Um, I like this last track, Tim, some of the, uh, sorry, I can't even remember what I wrote there. Damn, I, need, I really need to find a way of writing. My, the problem is my hand, and this one is my writing hand. I have a lot of arthritis in both of my hands, and sometimes I just can't get the letters the way I want them. But anyways, I try to do the best I can. This is a very strong solo on this particular track that I like quite a bit. Um, overall, I found this album very, very almost symphonic in its progressiveness. 
and I quite enjoyed it. Uh, it's a band definitely I would want to listen to more of. Uh, the band that it's going up against here, and sorry, the uh, I guess the air conditioning unit just popped on back here. <laughs> so the other band that we did was Cathedral. Cathedral is uh, a, it's a U.S. band, but they have very British sound to them. I, I find them more British sounding than a lot of British bands. Uh, the album we're doing is Stained Glass uh, Stories. Sorry, um, I've got that stained class uh, Judas Priest comment in my head still so hopefully I don't mess it up too bad. Anyways, this came out in 1978. It's on the Delta label. Um, lots of keyboards, lots of synthesizers. The vocals are kind of a bit quirky. I, I don't know how to describe them. They're, they're mid-range with a bit of a high range to them at times but it almost sounds like he's off key but he isn't. Because I listen to it, he's not off key at all. But it, it, maybe it's just a quirkiness in his voice gives that kind of feeling like it's off key, but it isn't. And it's like that in a couple other tracks as well. Um, Gong, which is the second song, some nice, interesting off-tempo music here. Lots of it. Lots of classical sounds. Lots of percussion. Lots of chimes. Um, and there's a kind of a synth background throughout the entire track. So you've got all of this kind of, um, I would say, almost woodland-like folky stuff. And then you have this synthesizer in the background. But it, it feels natural. Um, the vocals at some points are kind of very operatic in parts. And of course, like I said, it's very British sounding. Uh, lots of uh, strong instrumentation, and we're talking about the song Crossroads, I believe that's what it's called. Sorry, not Crossroads, that's um, Cream, this is Crossings, that's what I was trying to remember. Uh, the vocals are, again, in that same range. Um, days and Changes, the vocals are higher on this particular track. Lots of strong keyboard parts on it, I, I like that a lot. Um, and this song has almost a yesy feel to it, if that's a word, which it isn't. It feels a lot like, and especially that early yes, like uh, uh, yes album, time and a word type of thing. Uh, then you've got the very last uh, track, which is The Search. It's very melodic, lots more upbeat parts to it though. Um, and then the vocals, of course, have that, again, that quirky sound to them that make me feel like they're off, off, off beat. Well, not off beat, I would say off key, a little bit off key, but they're not, you know, I, I keep listening to it and uh, they're not off key. It just, it just gives that impression that they are. So overall, I found this a very strong album as well. This was a very difficult battle um, because to be honest, I like quite a, I like my trucker trying to get somebody's attention. Um, I, I very much like both. Now, okay, that got people's attention. Not mine, for sure. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, that might be the train coming. That's what that is. So we better end this soon. So I like both, but I decided that I like North Star just a little bit more. And so they're the ones going to be moving on. So before this guy gets crazy out of hand, we're going to let you go. So please like and subscribe and we'll see you again later.